Hello, I'm Jeff Myers, and welcome to Elgin Today. On this edition, the executive director of the Downtown Neighborhood Association, Jennifer Fukala, has big plans for what will now be called the Elgin Farmer's Market, slated to start on June 1st. Elgin Today travels to the Food for Greater Elgin location to hear from their lady in charge, Sheila Jackson, about their upcoming big event. Elgin City Council member Terry Gavin and Civil War reenactor John Brace get us ready for June 9th and 10th and the second annual Civil War experience here in Elgin. On the Mayor David Captain segment, we get to know these two hardworking members of the Public Services Department, Greg Hulkey, known as Mr. Green, and Aaron Neal, known as Mr. Gray, as we learn a lot about these two hardworking guys. We hear from Margarita Mendoza about last month's Latino Film Festival here in Elgin, and also from Council Member Rose Martinez, who was in attendance as well. And Barb Kiselica has all the information about the 41st annual Elgin Valley Foxtrot, slated for Saturday, May 26th. We'll have these stories and more on this edition of Elgin Today. For our first segment, we travel to Elgin South Grove Avenue to learn about changes to a popular summer event put on by the Downtown Neighborhood Association. We are revamping what has been formerly known as the Harvest Market. It's now going to be known as the Elgin Farmers Market. We're changing the day, we're changing the location, and we're really trying to upscale the event this year um, for the benefit of downtown. Talking about the location, we're at the new location. Describe it for us. We are. So we're actually going to be moving the market to Grove Avenue. And behind me here, um, south of the crosswalk is where we're going to be shutting down the street every Friday from 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. for the market. And we're also going to be having some vendors in DuPage Court here, as well as some activities in the Dream Hall at 51 South Grove that's also behind me here. What power you have to shut down the street. And the great, and again, our marker, DuPage Court and everything towards the boat from there. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, we're really trying to, um, you know, insert the customer base right here into the heart of downtown. And also, this will give us an opportunity to pair with some of the other great things that are happening on Fridays, such as First Friday's program um, that Side Street Studio Arts is um, working on. You mentioned Friday because it is now on Friday, starting Friday, June 1st. Is that right? Absolutely. So the first day will be June 1st. We're kicking it off on a first Friday. It's going to run through October 5th, and it'll be every Friday. Friday from 7, um, 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. So we're really looking to kind of kick off the weekend and uh, bring people downtown to do that. Will some of the vendors that we know from the old location return? Yes, we are going to have returning vendors. We're also uh, doing a lot of outreach right now to bring in some new vendors. And um, we're really focusing on quality this year. We want to make sure that, um, you know, we're bringing in a great variety and, you know, locally sourced produce because that's really what everybody wants. It's kind of a great way to showcase this part of the city, isn't it? Absolutely, and there's a lot of action going on down here on and around Grove Avenue. Um, we're going to have some signage along the bike path to help people that are uh, traveling up and down the bike path here, um, you know, be able to veer off through the market on their way through town. You know, so we know where DuPage Court is. You would suggest folks park where? I would suggest folks park in the parking um, along Riverside Drive, you know, the two um, sunken parking lots there, or Festival Park, um, or the Fulton Street Garage would all be great locations for parking. You'll have lots of folks from Elgin as far as vendors? Yeah, we are We are prioritizing Elgin vendors. Um, you know, we're widening the search to kind of the greater, um, you know, Kane County area, I guess you could say. Um, but, you know, we're really focusing on, you know, having a great variety. Well, it's always been fun to do that on Thursday, so now Fridays with this great location, is uh, it should be more fun. I hope so. You know, we really have gotten a lot of feedback in the past that, you know, on Thursdays during the day, anybody that works wasn't really able to participate. And so we've taken that feedback, and, um, you know, we're really hoping that this is going to be a better time frame for everybody um, to come out and have a great time. Congratulations that you're doing great uh, work for the DNA. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Jeff. And we'll look forward to the market. Great. Invite everybody to come out and uh, see us on June 1st. If we had vendors interested, how would they contact you? So the best way to contact us would be to, um, we do have a vendor application on our website, downtownelgin.com. Uh, you can also call the DNA office. Phone number there is 847-488-1456. And our event planner, Christina Gonzalez, is the main point of contact on this event. Our second story comes from this site on Elgin's northwest side and Food for Greater Elgin. As we chat with their executive director, Sheila Jackson, about their big event slated for this month. 
Food for Greater Elgin's signature event is called Palette to Palette. It's going to be held on May 21st at the Grand Victoria in the Fox River Room. Palette to Palette really is a friend raiser, and that's where we have local chefs and beverage crafters come along, do taste portions of food and uh, signature drinks. We'll also have delish cakes there. That'll be one of the favorite uh, one of the favorites. A great night. Now, now tell me how the night goes. It starts at 5:30. Uh, and it goes until 8.30. Um, there will be raffles, there will be silent auctions, there will be lots of games. It will be a lot of informational sessions as well. Taste all the food and mingle with other people who support our cause in which our mission is to uh, feed the people who are hungry. And you help a lot of folks in our area, don't you? Every month we feed 6,300 individuals. Wonderful. Great work on that. Tell me ticket price. Ticket price starts at $60. Um, a donation can go along with the with the ticket purchase of twenty dollars, which makes a total eighty. Twenty dollars buys a cart of food uh, for one family. Food for Greater Elgin. You're like a as we're here today. You're like a supermarket, aren't you? We are set up like a supermarket. We're a client choice, which makes us different from a lot of the other pantries where um, clients can come and shop for the food that they want instead of us giving them. Uh, that cuts down on waste and it also preserves their dignity. Yeah, it's beautiful back there. Thanks. <laughs> T tell me how clients get involved with you. Um, they, they, most of them find out uh, from us word of mouth. Um, they have to live in Elgin, South Elgin, East and West Dundee. We're looking to expand. We're not there yet. Uh, we never turn anyone away, obviously. Um, we require that they do uh, live in the area to come and shop here. We're not federally or state funded. And food for Greater Elgin, your location is? We're at 1553 Commerce Drive in Elgin. You've only been on the job like 10 weeks, is that right? 10 weeks, exactly. How's it been for the first 70 days? It's been great, actually. It's been the most humbling experience I've probably had so far in this lifetime. You had great staff here. You're always looking for volunteers, aren't you? Always looking for volunteers. We welcome with open arms volunteers. Volunteers are the heartbeat of our organization. There's no way uh, the four of us could ever service 6,300 people individually a week. To volunteer or to get tickets, how do I how do I do that? You can go to our website at www.foodforgreaterelgin.org, and you can purchase tickets there. You can sign up to volunteer there, or you can just donate. In uh, March, you guys won an Image Award. We did, and actually, I had only been here one month at that time. I was very excited. Um, it was definitely, definitely warranted, and the team was excited. This. This was an awesome experience for us. And I think it, it made people more aware that we're here and what we're doing for the, for the community. Elgin's second annual Civil War experience will take place on the weekend of June 9 and 10 here on this land now owned by the city of Elgin, once a part of the Elgin Mental Health Center along Route 20 and 31. We'll talk with some of the folks involved in making this happen, including John Brace, a city worker who will be a reenactor on this day. And first we hear from council member Terry Gavin. Second weekend in June, it's scheduled uh, 9th and 10th for this year. Um, we're praying for good weather, and I think we already have it reserved for that weekend. It was so much fun last year, wasn't it? Oh, it was fantastic. Absolutely. A new experience. Uh, the feedback we got from citizens, participants, reenactors, everybody, vendors, settlers, if you want to call them that, uh, they really enjoyed it. And it's going to be bigger and better this year. Uh, one of the things I tried to focus on whenever possible, because I've been talking about this for months, is part partnering with others in the community, stakeholders. U46, I mentioned to them, I'd like to see them partner up, because this is an educational event, a historic event. Um, I think kids today could learn an awful lot by studying that period in America's history. Um, ECC already has been partnering with us last year. Uh, I think it'll make it bigger, better, and I'm certain it's going to be bigger and better. Uh, with more people, we're expecting a larger crowd. Uh, we changed some of the vendors for the parking, uh, but everybody is, is really, really excited, and I am too. Wonderful. And the History Museum involved with that, they brought out folks in characters. And I saw okay. folks from out of town arrive in uniform as well. Exactly. That's it, fun. it draws from the Midwest. And this is one of the reasons I was so excited about trying to get this, and it took two, three years, was that it's not just an event. I mean, events, yes, we have many of them in Elgin, I think over 30 in a year. But this event draws people from outside, similar to the Foxtrot, similar to Nightmare on Chicago Street, and some other ones. And the more people we can draw to Elgin, the better. 
uh, selling the image of Elgin. So people who don't know what we're all about, they learn what good people are here and what great, what a great place to live and recreate. John Brace, great uniform. We're so excited the Civil War experience coming back again. Yes, I am too. Thank you. You're in full garb. Uh, tell me about this uniform you have. And this is the officer's uniform, basically the gold braiding and the yellow. This signifies cavalry. This signifies officer. The major is the rank that I currently hold. Well, tell me what this event means to you. Well, this event, well, for me personally, is a culmination of 20 years of wanting to actually put together a new and exciting event for the hobby. Um, with it coming to you know fruition last year, it was like you know, a bucket list checkoff for me. It was something that I wanted to do, and we got it done. And you, you work in Elgin, so being in your home city, like in your working city like that, that must make you feel good. Oh, absolutely. I think it's cool. I, you know, I've been with the city almost 14 years. Um, I love everything that goes on here. I have a good time. And for the city to actually back this and really go forward with it, I was excited. What group are you involved when, you, when you're here? I am with the 9th Virginia Cavalry Company B and McGregor's Artillery. Okay, the McGregor's Battery, mm -hmm. and uh, we have been a group together for 23 years. And where are you based out of? Um, well, we started out in Argyle, Wisconsin, and then we headquartered in Madison, and now we're out of Roscoe, Illinois. How many folks will be in you? How many different groups will come out for our Civil War experience? Um, last year we had 310. We had about I think 22 different groups, and they range anywhere from you know artillery, cavalry infantry, uh, medical demonstrations, and civilians. Have you got any new things for us this year? Well, there's talk and rumor that there might be some trenches out here on the field this year so we can actually uh, portray some trench warfare. And the guys liked it last year, didn't they? Oh, the, the, the Civil War community absolutely loved it. Um, they are all going to be back in force. We're already sitting over 350 registered. And Terry Gavin reminded us just how much we can learn about the Civil War on these two days. Oh, yes. It's not just about the actual battles. Uh, if you read anything in, in history about warfare, it's like... 15 seconds of chaos and, and turmoil and 45 seconds of every minute of boredom. So camp life is portrayed. Uh, what, what, the people that used to travel with the army back in those days, the, mm -hmm, yeah. the, all the different, uh, they yeah, they, they, there was people who made clothes, there were uh, leather makers, etc. Of course, you had to have somebody who knew something about gunsmithing. So it's all, you know, it's, it's a whole city that was moving from location to location. Um, it was one of the first wars in, in world history where trains played a big role. Yeah. Um, I studied the Civil War a lot in my youth. Uh, uh, it was fascinating. And I mean the actual books written by the people who were there at the time. It's time for our segment for May with Mayor David Captain. Mayor, you've got a couple of special guests for us today. We do, you? Jeff. We're out at the uh, Public Works uh, building uh, for the city of Elgin. With me today are uh, two new guys that are really moving up into the organization. Right. Uh, Greg Hulkey on the far end down there is, uh, we call him Mr. Green. Really? And we'll explain, he'll explain what that means to you. And Aaron Neal is Mr. Gray for the City of Elgin and our Public Works. They've taken over directorship of the Public Works and uh, looking forward to a nice long career with these guys. They came up through the organization and I'd like them each to tell us how long they work for the city and what their ter what their current job is. All right, well, we'll start with uh, Greg on the far end here. Greg, how are you, sir? I'm good, how are you, Jeff? And, and how'd you get that name again? Your Mr. Nickname, Green. You, yeah, Mr. Green. Uh, I am in charge of all the uh, the land management side of the city of Elgin. So everything that's green and touchy feely, all the parks, forestry, some of the cemetery, all that stuff. So anything that looks nice and is wow. you enjoy seeing, that's what I am in charge of. Well, so that new work at St. Francis Park, you're you're under the tutelage. Uh, working on that hand in hand with Randy Riopelle right now. Well, it looks great in the early time. Yeah, he's doing well. He's doing well with it, and the contractor's doing a real good job as well. What else? What do you want to talk about with these guys? I think that we, uh, you know, uh, Aaron uh, takes care of our streets and does our plowing, uh, in charge of our plowing. I think it's important to uh, it's a separation of uh, of duties, and it's something, mm -hmm. something new for the city. And that's what I'd like to talk about. This is something that makes Elgin unique, and it may be a thing of the future. We know these jobs get so big and yeah. so difficult for people to do, and maybe it's a way that we look at with the assistant city managers yeah. that we divide duties and uh, makes the job a little bit easier for everybody and it gives them a better opportunity to really drill down into their own department and what they're doing. And you certainly certainly know their duties. You had a busy April. Wait, let us know. We've had a busy <laughs> April, Jeff. We really have. Um, yeah, so my name is Aaron Neal, Mr. Gray, uh, Public Works Operations Superintendent for the last six months. Uh, though me and Greg share very uh, defined 
uh, task work that we that we work on every day. Uh, our, our singular task is is to bring this group of, together of uh, men and women of the Public Works Department. So Greg deals with the green side of Public Works operations. I am the gray side, and, and what that means to the community is 396 lane miles of street. Yeah. All of the sidewalks. Uh, for the last five months, it's been snow removal operations. That, that falls directly under my purview, uh, as well as our citywide uh, LEAF program, both rakeout and right. bagging. Yeah. So those programs fall under my purview. Uh, and ultimately, Greg and I, our, our goal is to provide core city services to the best way that we can. And we're strong in the world of LEAF. We're strong, aren't we? We are. And I, you know, I, I really want to talk to these guys about and put a face to the, to the, to the jobs that they do and ask them, how long have you lived in Elgin? How long have you worked for the Public Works Department, worked for the city? And uh, I'll give a little personal background. Married, right. you know, what do you do? What well, do you do in your spare time and those kind of things? Take that, E.T. All right. <laughs> Mr. Green, let me, let's hear it. Uh, like I said, my name is Greg, Greg Hulke. Um, I have been in the city now for 15 years working for the city. I uh, started as an arborist, was a horticulturalist, was a crew leader, and now I'm public works, public works superintendent. I've been back in Elgin now since 2000, though. And uh, but my family has been in this town for ages. Mr. Captain actually knows some of my extended family uh, from back in the day when he was a, a young man just like me. So, you know, we've done that. And personal time, you know, I like to spend some time with my wife up in northern Wisconsin. I enjoy that. I enjoy bowling, all that kind of fun stuff. And, you know, <laughs> we had the uh, bowling, the Crosstown Classic took place in, in April. That was exciting with the mayor. Yeah, I'm not, not part of that one. I'm thankful. I'm not good well, enough. What's your average in bowling? Uh, Actually, right now I'm averaging 212, which is not too That's good, not too shabby, but not good enough to be in the Crosstown Classic. Those guys are better than I am. I yeah. guarantee it. Well, that's great. You're up there with the Pearlies. Good work. And uh, Aaron, uh, tell me about yourself a little bit more. So I've been with the city for 14 years. Uh, I started three days after I graduated high school as a part-time employee. Did you graduate from Elgin? I graduated from St. Ed's. Right. So I started as a part-time employee. Had no idea what the city of Elgin was, what the organization was going to mean to me as I grew into an adult. Uh, and people would tell me all the time, Aaron, you work for the city, you have a really good job. Yeah, I was 17 years old. <laughs> um, I was lucky enough to get on full time in 2006 and I haven't looked back since. So I am the product of the city of Elgin's part-time oh, uh, employment program. Uh, spent some time as a utility worker, which is, you know, entry level position in the Public Works Department. Was promoted to crew leader in 2010. I was the city's youngest crew leader at the time, at, at the ripe age of 23. Uh, wow. Yeah, spent spent just under eight years in that position before being promoted to superintendent. So I am a homegrown product of this organization, someone who understands the culture, someone who understands the vision, and someone who's going to be here for a while to be part of the future of this organization, this city. That's wonderful. And Mayor, you talk about that. You like folks who love Elgin can project that wonderful image of Elgin. And exactly. And, and Jeff, you know, we're baseball people, and I always talk to the city manager. Talk when I became mayor, I liked the idea of a farm team. And you bring people up through the organization, and that's how you create. That's how you create diversity. That's how you bring history back. That's how you have people that you plug into these jobs. They've been doing these kind of things, and uh, they know where the streets are at. They know where the problems are at. They've uh, done that all their life, and I think that's right. important, no matter what the department is, whether it's police, fire, public works. That's why I was brought up from AAA Charlotte. You're a Sox fan. <laughs> I, am, I am a diehard Sox fan since 1986. That's yes. and proud to say diehard it right here. Sox. Ooh, let's see if he gets out of the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the diehard Sox fan. Um, but this organization represents to me and, and Greg at the time of our appointment, it's, it's a very flat organization, and that starts from city manager Kozo all the way down. Uh, me and Greg are appointed to this position, and it's not about us. Nothing that we do, we're not looking for self-gratification. We have wonderful staff that works beneath us, and we know that we we could not be in these positions without them. So the men and women of the Elgin Public Works Department are who helped propel Greg and I to these positions, and we will never, we're never going to forget that. So we're not here to be the leaders by way of force. You know, we're, we're here to be inclusive with the group, right. and coming from within the organization, we understand their problems, and we're, we're going to help make those better. So. Wonderful, you're a great team and organizational players. Yes, sir. Great work. Great yes, work. Sir. We're at 1900 Homes. If you wonder where the address is for public work. And Jeff, one of the things that uh, uh, what you know as I like to do, uh, the mayor's walks are starting the third. 30th of May. Mm -hmm. I want to get out into the community. I see these guys out in the community. We had some snow problems. Aaron came through. He caught me. He caught me uh, blowing the snow off my sidewalk and uh, driving through the neighborhoods and, and looking to see what the problems are. And that's part of what this job is: is community relations. How do you get out and deal uh, with uh, 
personal issues. And one of the things that I do, Jeff, is uh, if I get a complaint, I'll send it on to these guys. And I, do, I have a one line. I'm going to send it on to the person best, uh, best equipped to answer your problems and resolve yours. I'm not that guy. It's these guys. He's a hardworking mayor. I like that. No, that's the way to do it. They send it to the guys with the knowledge and the ability to do something about it. Absolutely. And, and so me and Greg took these positions from our, our crew leader spots to management. These are now management positions. And there's always been a defined role that people think when you think of management. We're sitting in the office pushing paper. Uh, being you guys part, are never here, are you? Being part of the Public Works Department, our office is the 36 square miles of the city of Elgin. Very rarely will you catch us in the office. I mean, obviously, there's paperwork we have to do. But Greg can attest to that more as, as Superintendent Green. I mean, our office is in this city. And that's, that's, a, that's a level of satisfaction that can't be equated anywhere else, I believe, in the org. So. Superintendent Green? Yeah, I have to split my time between all the different parks. I'm out at Lords, I'm out at Wing, I'm out at the cemetery. I have all kinds of different places to go. So being in the office is an occasional thing. It's not as, uh, not as nice as it would be if I didn't have to go other places, but no. got to be all around, got to be everywhere. But like Aaron said, I mean, we've been working with all these guys for the last 15 years. So we want to continue working with them and flatten this out. You know, we have no reason to try and pull any hierarchy or anything like that. This that's is, great. we're working together and that's what we want to do from here on out. You love your work and you love your city and, and your mayor. So it Indeed. all works, yeah, Indeed. All works together. <laughs> and your White Sox, we must. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're a cub man? You poor souls. Yeah, poor yeah. souls. Well, we don't live on the south side where, you know. <laughs> we'll edit that out in post. <laughs> oh, Mayor, this is delight to meet these hardworking guys who have so much uh, uh, warmth for their, their work in their city. Yeah, they bring a lot to the they bring a lot to the organization. And, uh, you know, Greg spent a lot of time working on events downtown with uh, Barb Caselica doing yeah. those things. Aaron the same way making those connections and it's really uh, uh, something that brings part of the history to, to the city and makes our things go seamless you know we've got uh, fourth of july parade coming up that's a huge thing for us to deal it with is. Yeah. 22nd annual 22nd right. annual yeah. with the fox stretch coming shortly before that yeah, at the right. end of may that's right may 26th so yeah you guys are active for that there's a lot of work to do to make those prep it doesn't just happen overnight all of those things these guys are out there uh, working late same thing with the uh, nightmare on chicago street uh, speaking of working late that's uh, yeah. Full day job. I turn into a zombie by noon of that day. There you go. <laughs> Me too. We're almost out of time. Uh, we appreciate that great work, guys. Uh, tremendous. We love, uh, we couldn't do the, the city wouldn't be the same without you guys. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. And, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And good luck to your Cubs. Thank you. Thank All right. You. And Mayor? My uh, Cubs, well, too. We're, yeah, you're, yeah, well, you predicted their championship of 2016. We're out of time, but we'd have that story about you young. When Mr. Green talked about he knew relative uh, that when you were working for the city. That's, that's what happens when you live here yeah. 70 years. Yeah. So yeah. I remember one man told him, kid, you could probably put a little water in that shovel. You might be shoveling something. Was that go. the story? That's one of my stories, yep. <laughs> that was a while back. Oh, I was. Jeff, uh, we'll see you again uh, next month. That's my cue to get out of here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Mr. Green. And Mr. Gray, we're out of here. Thanks. That's our uh, mayor's segment coming your way from Holmes right here, Holmes Road and uh, Public Works. Thanks. Elgin today had the delightful opportunity to visit the Elgin Latino Film Festival on its opening night at Elgin Community College in mid-April. We talk with Margarita Mendoza, who helped create this great event. She tells us what it means to her, to ECC, and to Elgin. This event is very important. The Latino Film Festival in Elgin which this year we are celebrating the sixth six year in the city of Elgin, bring together different communities, not only from Elgin, but from surrounding area. The movies are wonderful, and they have English subtitles. We try also to bring together our culture, not only with the big screen, but also with the food, with the taste from different countries. And Margarita would also remind us not only the food, but the movies came from many countries as well. Well, this year we have Mexico, Peru, Chile, Uruguay, and also USA, with a great cast of Hispanic people from Chicago, and they are directed by uh, Max Da Silva. And Margarita would also tell us just how this Latino film festival came to Elgin. Well, I always used to go to the Latino Film Festival in Chicago, and I saw, saw how wonderful that festival was and always wondering, why don't we have it in Elgin? I tried to talk many years, for many years, you know, let, let me bring it, let me bring it. And then the opportunity came and they're here today. Well, I think that this is a nice partnership that we have. And what it means to me is that I don't have to go into Chicago to different theaters to watch these movies. Um, 
I think that uh, the bridge that they have built, not only with ECC, with the Latino Film Festival, also with Marcus Theater, uh, I think it's very nice. It's like these movies are coming to us rather than us going to them. Uh, I've enjoyed every year that I've come, and I do not miss going to, uh, like I said, to Chicago to go see them. Let's take a quick look at some of the construction work being done at St. Francis Park in Elgin's east side. A June completion date is expected for such improvements as a new playground area for two and five year olds and five and 12 year olds. Also, they will resurface one of the tennis courts with a pickleball overlay, a new large picnic shelter being built, and all this will be done in early June. That's at St. Francis Park on Elgin's east side. Our final segment here for the May edition of Elgin Today, it's the Elgin Valley Fox Ride. I love the month of May. It's always fun. May 26th this year, Barb Caselica. Yes, we have our 41st annual um, Elgin Valley Fox Trot. It starts at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, we have a 5K, a 10K, a 10-mile, and a 2-mile walk for a cause. Oh, I love that full slate you have when you have all the runners and all the walkers. It's great because it's um, a true community event that gets a lot of people out and going. No question about that. Now, at this time, uh, we pretty much have a lot of folks register. Good numbers, haven't we? Uh, yes. Um, so we usually about get 2,000 participants between wow. um, all four of the, uh, the, the choices. And uh, we have about 28 not-for-profits this year signed up. So it's going to be a great event. You've been involved in how many of these now? Uh, you're so young, it couldn't be many. <laughs> I know you're not there for day one, but you're there for a few of them, aren't you? Uh, this will be my 13th. Wow. Well, yeah, and you're only 21 years old. That's yes. incredible. <laughs> the, the theme, I, I like that. Although it's a, a land event, we are water driven this year. Is that right? It, that is correct. So we uh, theme it with the Gail Borden Library That's with their um, um, exhibit that goes on, uh, Deep Extreme. So this year, um, we're inviting all of our runners to come with their goggles and their swimsuits really? and just have a good time. Wow, like I'm on the beach, but I'm on the pavement, huh? There you go, yep. Oh, that's fun. That's a great concept. I love your, your themes and tie-ins like that. Lots of folks come up to me. How about that two-mile walk for a cause? Tell me how that works. So um, all the, the proceeds for the registration fees go back to the not-for-profits. It raises a, a little bit more than $10,000 between all 28 nor, um organizations. That's great. And that's really grown into a major event, hasn't it? It has. And the kids like it so much. They do. And it's like, again, it's just great to see the community come out and have a good time. Speaking, getting back to the trot itself, uh, firefighter Edward Hansen, this is his 23rd. Now, you researched and you found some folks that had done almost all of them, hadn't you? Um, there is a couple that have done um, quite a few, um, and it's, it's always great to see them come out. Yes, it is. So, again, what's that early start again? 7.30, Brighton? 7.30, yes. And it's great. And there's always like a warm-up session, too. You have somebody out there. There is. Usually somebody from the center of Elgin will come out and do a warm-up. And um, the American Legion also comes out uh, with their color guard uh, to honor the Memorial Day um, weekend. And uh, Is there somebody on the public address? Uh, and the mayor, of course. Always the mayor. Um, he starts the event uh, with a bang. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and uh, Jeremy Hayes up in the gondola there. Yes. The mayor always says, Jeremy, what's your current weight? Oh, I, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is fun. But, but a public address, is there a public address person? Pub like, now running? Oh, that would be you. Hey, there we go. <laughs> It took us three minutes and 15 seconds, but we got to that. That's, I've done that since 2013. That's a great honor to do that. Oh, we love having you out there. And it's great to see all the community people who actually know, you know, Jeff Myers just wouldn't be the same without you. Yeah, I'm the annoying guy with the microphone. That's what they say. <laughs> Wonderful. We're, congratulations on this great event, the Elgin Valley Fox Trot. We look forward to it every year, and it's always fun. That's great. Please visit our website at www.cityofelgin.org slash foxtrot. All right. May 26 it is for what we call the Elgin. Elgin Valley Foxtrot. So we'll see you there with a microphone. Bye-bye. You can learn more about the information you saw here in Elgin today or about city services, programs, and events by going to the Elgin website at www.cityofelgin.org. And now the City of Elgin has a 311 contact center. Elgin 311. Call, click, connect. By calling 311, the city's information and request resource. As we close, let's look at some of the photos from this year's Elgin Crosstown Classic Bowling event. And also remind you, our camera operator for Elgin today is Jeremy Hayes. Our still photographer is Bruce Shipyor. Yours truly, Jeff Myers, with you. Now, Elgin Lanes bested Bowlway Lanes. They knocked down more pins. That was a tiebreaker. And they waltzed away with the Mayor's Cup for the Elgin Crosstown Classic, the second time in six years of this event that Elgin Lanes has won. Congratulations to both Elgin Lanes and Bowlway Lanes and all of the bowlers out there as well. We'll see you next time.